Hi everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Cassie Riva. I'm the events coordinator at an unlikely story bookstore in Plainville. Before we start, I wanted to give you a few technical points. If you have any issues with video or audio quality, click the help button in the upper right corner of your screen and follow the prompts, or close out of the presentation and log back in using Google Chrome as your browser. Any questions for the author can be written in the question and answer box at the bottom of your screen. If you'd like to buy, this very, very fun book. There's a green button at the bottom of your screen that's gonna take you right to our website. And when you purchase Girl Stuff from an Unlikely Story, you're gonna receive an autographed book plate from the author. I am so excited to introduce the number one best-selling author of the mega popular click series, Lissy Harrison. Lissy worked at MTV Networks in New York City for 12 years before writing the click series. That series has sold more than 8 million copies and has been on the New York Times bestseller list for more than 200 weeks with foreign rights sold in 33 countries. Her books, Alpha and Monster High were both instant bestsellers. Lissy is currently adapting her Pretenders YA series into a narrative podcast for Spotify and writing a new middle grade series called The Pack. Lizzie lives in Laguna Beach in California, and when she's not writing or working on her next girl stuff novel, she's hiding in her pantry eating chips. We all wish we were doing that. Lissy's new middle grade novel, Girl Stuff, is about three seventh grade girls tackling new experiences, crushes, and the bonds of friendship. Tweens are absolutely going to adore this fun coming of age story. And so during the event tonight, Lissy is doing a very, very special prize giveaway. She's gonna do a Girl Stuff presentation followed by a Girl Stuff quiz. And if you participate in the quiz, you can just write it in the chat on the side. If you're selected as the winner, it's gonna be random, so whoever participates can win. You're going to, your name will be in the next Girl Stuff book. That's a really, really awesome prize. Lizzie, thank you so, so much for joining us tonight. I'm gonna to pull you up on screen now. Hello. Hello, how are you? Great, how are you? Great, thank you. Thank you for having me. This is very exciting. You have the coolest background. My <laughs> eyes just like instantly, they're llamas, right? They are paper mache llamas, and I, they're here because I just moved, and my office, I don't know if you can hear, is really echoey. I don't have anything up, and so I got these guys and just put them in my background so it wouldn't look like I'm inside of a marshmallow, an echoey marshmallow, So, and they've become my little muses. They're the only people I talk to all day long, so this is very exciting. They are absolutely fantastic. People. So thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for joining us. You have a PowerPoint for us. I'm going to pull that up for you. Thank you. I just briefly, you know, you do this for long enough and people start to ask very similar questions over and over. So I figured I would just put some stuff together so that you guys could understand a little bit about what I do and how I got to where I am. And that way, any other questions you have could be brand new and fresh and exciting. So hopefully this answers some of the things that you guys wanted to know. So I'm going to tell you the top secret and very shocking way I became a writer. Now, this is very privileged information, so get your pens and papers out because here we go. How do you become a writer? What do you do? You... Slide, please. <laughs> Did it not work? Nope. <laughs> you write. That's it. That's how you become a writer. It's like the easiest. It's free. It's easy. All you have to do is actually write and you get to call yourself a writer. Now, what do you write at first? You decide you want to be a writer. Where do you go from there? So here's what I recommend. You start by journaling. Now, what's so great about journaling? As you can see from my first point, spelling, grammar, and punctuation don't count. You get to be completely you. You don't have to worry about any of the rules. And you just start writing words and thoughts and all those ugly things that you don't feel comfortable sharing with the world yet, or you don't know if you're ready or if they're ready. And you just get to start hearing the sound of your own voice, which is very important because that's what writing is. Or that's what an individual writer is. They're just a different voice telling pretty much the same stories. We all, you know, there are only so many stories in the world to tell, and they've all been done many times over and over again, but it's that particular writer's voice that makes one feel different than the other. So it's very important to get to know your voice and what kind of person, what kind of perspective you have. So another great thing about journaling is no one will ever read it, hopefully, hopefully. 
So it doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to be kind. It just gets to be all of you and all the rawness of being human. And it's just for all the things that you wish you didn't feel, but you did, and all the little details that are gonna make your novel really great someday. Um, and you can either use this stuff later or burn it, but either way, you're getting to start to hear what being a writer looks like and sounds like. Next slide. Okay, so what's so cool about being a writer? We, okay, next slide. <laughs> Is it not switching? I think it, I might be on, maybe I'm on a delay. Is that why it's okay? Okay, maybe. Um, so that's fine. I'm just, this one's a quick one. You just get to sign all kinds of fun things. I've signed bagels and shoes and walls and arms, and that's kind of fun. And fans make nail art to match your book covers, and they draw pictures of you. <laughs> Not that flattering. Um, you get to meet really cool authors, which has also been amazing and more authors and sometimes a movie is based on one of your novels the click um was a movie one of the just one movie and that was very exciting but that's not even the coolest part of being a writer the coolest part is you get to control the universe now i get to control what people say, what they do, what they wear, how it's all gonna come out in the end. And you can't do that in real life, which is really unfortunate because I've tried and failed miserably. Turns out you can only control yourself. And so when I get to write, I get to play God and decide how the whole world is going to turn out. And it's really fun. Now, I don't use weapons or mind control or AI. I use one thing and that is, words. I just use words and that's all you need. Um, the exciting thing for me to think about sometimes is that all the words are just sitting in a dictionary waiting to be played with and you can move them around however you want and you can make them do all sorts of different things and they're just waiting for you. And then the coolest part is everyone has the same words to choose from, but nobody's going to do it the exact same way unless you plagiarize, which is illegal and don't do that. But if you, so it's like feeling like there's this big game ahead of you and you get to totally geek out and do whatever you want with them. And so do you know what, like, you know, when people say, oh, well, I really wanted to write like a space movie, but Star Wars was already done. So like, I guess I can't do it anymore. And there are as many ways to write a space movie as there are stars in the sky my friends you can it's all about finding your voice knowing what those characters are going to be and just doing it your own way um so how did i become a writer in the first place where did it all start well i grew up in toronto canada and as you can see that it is very cold and snowy there and i had pretty strict parents who wouldn't let me watch tv that much and so i had to read and one of the most influential books I ever read was Harriet the Spy because this was about a girl who kept a spy notebook. And I was so excited by the idea of keeping a notebook and just observing people. And I would hide under the table when my parents had friends over and I would just get my little spy notebook out and I would just write down little things I observed about them, about their feet under the table, about the sounds of their voices, when I thought they were being hypocrites and really lame. And I was just taking notes and I started, I kept the spy journals for a really long time and I'd write details like, my French teacher wears these brooches of dogs all the time. Or my English teacher is always picking orange peels out of the trash can and eating them. And all these weird little quirky things that humans do suddenly become great details for characters in books. And that all just sort of like lit me up and made me want to do it more and more. Um, and I realized just there's characters everywhere. And once you realize that, it becomes such a fun game. So that's what got me into writing in the first place. And so I went to college for writing. I went to Emerson College in Boston. Um, and I, I 
studied writing and that was all fine. But if I'm being totally honest, I was never much of a student. I was always very distracted and restless. And so all of the real learning, I kind of found my place after college when I moved to New York and got a job working at MTV, which I got because I knew somebody and whatever. It's not that magical, but I got a job working at MTV where I stayed for 12 years and actually 15 years. And that's where I kind of found my people. And that's where I found my groove. And I was surrounded by a bunch of creative weirdos and people that also got excited about words and dictionaries and spy notebooks. And I suddenly was like, oh, this is, this is my jam. And I sort of want to say to anybody that is in school now, that's kind of like, yeah, I'm doing this thing, but what's wrong with me because I don't really love school or I don't really, I haven't found my people or I feel a little like I'm not connecting with people. And I just want to say that school might not be your time and everybody sort of peaks and finds their groove at different times. And if it's not now, it will be in the future. And I can promise you that. And we all sort of think that we're supposed to like just find ourselves at these times in life where everyone tells us we're supposed to, and it doesn't always work that way. And if it doesn't just be patient because you will find your thing maybe after school. And that's, that's great. Um, so when I was at MTV, I ended up writing the click series. Um, it was how that came about was I started to notice that a lot of the people at MTV, they were, we were these like 20 something, like everybody's cool, we're living in New York City. And I just kind of realized that everybody was trying really hard to be cool and fit in and be popular. And it reminded me of middle school all over again. And so I thought, why not write a series about that feeling and that need that we all have to want to fit in and belong and instead of sort of setting it at a cable network in New York, which is where I was, I decided to set it at a time when we can all relate to it. Not everybody can relate to working at a cable channel in New York, but we can all relate to those awkward feelings that we go through when we're in middle school. So that's where the click came about. And now I have you know, written several series. They all follow very similar themes that sort of need to want to fit in and belong and the ways that we sort of betray ourselves in order to be liked. And I kind of never really get sick of that feeling and that theme because even when you're a full grown adult, unfortunately, you're still dealing with that. <laughs> unfortunately, you still have these painful crushes and you still have these mean girls and you still have this need to fit in and have people respect you and you want to matter. And that doesn't really change when you get older. The only thing that really changes is you know how to handle it a little bit better and you don't let it completely take you down. But um, the older I get, the more I realize that that stuff never changes. And so I, I constantly love exploring those themes. And the latest series that I'm doing, like Kathy said, is Girl Stuff. And girl stuff, again, my spy notebook came in very handy. Thank you. My spy notebook came in very handy because now I find myself with two kids. When I started writing girl stuff, I have two boys that both at the time were in middle school. And if I'm just observing behavior in middle school, there was a ton of just, you know, just life was hard, you know, before pandemic when it was just not hard, hard, but just hard. And um, I couldn't stop realizing like, you don't need mean girls in your story necessarily. You don't need the bully factor. Just being a tween or teenager on planet earth is hard enough. There's enough coming at you to create the drama. So I wanted where the click was a lot of like best friends that were frenemies. I wanted a story where these girls really had each other's backs. It wasn't about the friendships that they were fighting and they weren't fighting each other, even though they do sometimes get into fights because that's what we do in relationships. Sometimes we fight, but these girls really had each other's backs and have each other's backs instead of wanting to stab each other in the backs. And that, that felt new for me. And it felt like something I wanted to put out there to people because things are just really hard right now. And you need your girlfriends, you need your friends. Like those are the ones that get you through. 
And um, girl stuff is about that. It's about three best friends who are so excited because they get to go to middle school together. They get to start seventh grade together. They've always been besties, but they never went to school together. And they think this is going to be the best year ever. What could possibly go wrong? We're together. And everything goes wrong. There's crush drama and friend drama and it just what everything kind of falls apart and it's really about how they put it back together again while still trying to maintain the friendship and that's sort of going to happen throughout the rest of the series the books that follow the what next one is called crush stuff so it's about how they're dealing with their crushes and all the boy drama and it's really just real life but funny and to me humor is such an important part of my writing it always has been because when life is hard, I'd so much rather laugh about it and find the humor in the horribleness than cry. And I know that when, you know, you're going through stuff, there's so many serious books out there about just how hard life can be. And so after I have a bad day, I don't want to come home and read more bad. I want to come home and know that I can relate to something that I'm reading, but that it's also going to show me a new perspective and make me laugh about it. And so that's always very important. So it's it's drama, but it's funny. And um, that's that's girl stuff. And that's what I'm really excited to share with you all. This book is the perfect representation of middle school. I have vivid, vivid memories from middle school, sometimes nightmares. Yeah. And it's just like, it's so perfect. It's so funny and it's just so charming um, and just so relatable. Um, and the three characters, the three main characters are fantastic. What was your inspiration for those three characters? Did you have friends that were similar? You know, the, you know what, each character, so to briefly explain the characters, there's Fonda and she has these two older sisters that are just fabulous. And she feels like the baby and she hasn't really gone through puberty yet. And she just wants to be older and respected so badly. So while I did not have that experience, I know what it feels like to just want to matter, to just want to be respected and taken seriously. and so. I took those feelings that I have that I'm sure so many people have and I put them in this fictional character. And then there's Drew who is, you know, very athletic and just very easygoing and cool but has this debilitating crush on this guy who's very hot and cold. And I mean, I can certainly relate to that. I'm not athletic at all, so there was no part of that that's in Drew, but you know, I live in Laguna Beach and this book is set in a fictional but similar town. And so there's a, just a lot of cool blonde girls skateboarding around and surfing. And I'm definitely not part of that scene, but I could like, but it seeped into my brain and it's fabulous. And I wanted to show a character that's like just the girl that can hang with the boys. That's just as cool as they are and can skate and surf and do all those things. Cause there are a lot of them here and it's really inspiring. So I took the whole, I have this hopeless crush and this guy is like hot and cold. Does he like me? Does he not like me? And it's, how is it affecting my friendships? Cause I'm obsessed and I know I shouldn't be, but I am. I just took those feelings and gave them to Drew. And then Ruthie, who is really very, very smart. Um, very, just her brain is constantly thirsty for just more knowledge. She just, knowledge is her cardio. She just loves it. Um, she's got these short bangs and this weird haircut. She loves foreign films and she's just kind of a weirdo. And she gets put in this um, gifted and talented program, which she didn't know she was going to get put in. And so now she's got major FOMO because her other friends are now having this middle grade experience without her and she's separated from them. And so again, while I can't relate to being a fantastic student and I can't relate to being brilliant beyond my, you know, I can relate to feeling left out or feeling like the weirdo or feeling like I'm not quite connecting with the people that I feel like I should be connecting with and what's wrong with me. And so they're not literal representations of me, but they all carry pieces of me. And I think as a writer, you get to sort of work through your own level of like crazy and insecurity through your characters. And it's almost like you're talking yourself through whatever issues you're dealing with and then sharing it. <laughs> That's fantastic. We have a couple questions from the audience. Yeah. How do you think social media has changed friendships and pressures in girls today? 
That's a great question. Um, oh God, it's horrible. I have nothing good to say about it. I really, I don't, I'm sorry. I've watched my own kids just completely lose touch. I cannot imagine the insecurity, the, the, just the feeling of like, oh, they had a sleepover and posted it and I wasn't there. I mean, that gut punch, when I tell you, like I experience that now, I'm really not on social media for that reason because I realized over time, every time I would check it, I'd leave feeling horrible because it's almost designed to set up to make you feel horrible. Like I'm not as attractive as these people. I'm not living the life they're living. I'm not invited to the things that they're invited to. And even though intellectually we all know that there's filters and it's fabricated and the second they're not posting that picture, their life could suck just as much as mine, but it just still plays on you. And I, I just wish everybody would just get off of those things. I, I just don't see it doing any good. Um, and actually, I don't want to spoil anything, but one of the characters does go through something very much having to do with social media and phones in the second book, Crush Stuff. So I definitely work out my frustrations through them, <laughs> through the characters. So yeah. hard. I had in middle school, we still had the flip phones that were basically indestructible. Yeah. So it wasn't too bad, but like high school, oh, oh, my mom would never let me have social media in high school. And I'm so grateful for it now. I was mad at her then, but of I'm so course. grateful for it now. Of course. No, it's great. It was hard enough without it. Right. <laughs> Need this. Yeah. How is writing this group of girls as opposed to writing the girl group in Click? Another great question. It was challenging at first, if I'm being totally honest, because I'm used to that biting, girly, backstabby sense of humor. And it was really fun to write. And that's been very popular, you know, in movies and TV forever. The pretty girls have to be mean and they have to be insecure. And I think just being older and also thankfully just our, our um, culture is shifting and we're not celebrating mean anymore the way we used to. And I've learned a lot from that. And I was forced to really stretch myself. It took a couple drafts, if I'm being really honest. It, I was forced to stretch myself and go, how can you be funny without being mean? Isn't funny, isn't mean funny? Like even slapstick, somebody falls down and we laugh. <laughs> you know, like there's a darkness to humor that I've just always had in me. And so it's how do you find the funny without being mean? And it took me some reprogramming and I'm so incredibly proud because I feel like I have, but it's zero mean. It's just goofy, funny. There's so much more to laugh at than mean. And I'm really glad that I learned that lesson and I hope that I can teach that moving forward. You write such fun dialogue. How do you come up with the cute terms of phrases the girls use? I love nesties. That was adorable. <laughs> Literally just how my brain works. It's And I'm now my son does the same thing. I have ruined him as well. But I just look for the, I combine words all the time. I look for new words. I mean, in writing, truly, one of the, my biggest pet peeves is cliche. I cannot stand any cliche. And so when I'm writing and I'm about to hit one, I'll either change it a little bit so it becomes my own and unique or like in the click and even in this, in everything I write, I try to make up my own language and my own inside jokes so that it feels very much a part of these girls. Like anyone who's had a best friend knows that you make up your own words, you have your own inside jokes, you have a language that becomes so unspoken, you just have to make eye contact at certain moments and you're cracking up. And I've always loved that about close friendships and I'm always trying to recreate it in my book. So I will often like pick my cuticles, like try to think of what the best like term is or joke and it sometimes it takes a while, but I won't stop until I find it. <laughs> is Fonda's mother based on anyone you know? No, she's just based on a million strong feminist women that I just love. I love the way she parents and may, maybe a little bit like the parenting of yesteryear where parents just weren't completely controlling and involved. I love that Fonda, maybe my parents a little bit. My parents gave me a lot of freedom to make mistakes, you know, 
They never were trying to keep me from screwing up. I screwed up a ton and they were there when I did, but they let me. And that's how you learn to not screw up. And I think parents now are trying so hard to keep their kids from making mistakes so they don't get hurt. And I just don't think that's the right way to parent. And so I wanted to put a parent in there that was very into giving her daughters accountability and responsibility. Like you want to eat as much junk food as you want, go ahead, but you're paying for your cavities, you know, you're paying for your fillings and just, you want it. I'm, and you know, she wrote her daughter a note. She wrote Fonda a note that you can leave school anytime you want. And that today would sound insane, but it, Fonda never used it until what she finally used it once. But I think the idea of being given freedom kind of makes you not need it as much. And so I loved, I think she, I modeled her after who I think we should all be a little bit more like as parents. That's fantastic. I love Ruthie's parents. They're, everyone in this book is just so awesome. Um, where did you get the inspiration for this book? What made you say, I want to write this new series now? Again, it was just around me. There were, you know, I had two kids in middle school and there was actually this, there's this group of girls that I truly love um, in this town. And we've started a book club and they're all, you know, they're in seventh grade now. And they're such good friends. They're so kind and so charitable and so cool and just down to earth. And it's sort of, it's the same thing of like, you can be funny and nice. You can be cool and popular and beautiful and nice. <laughs> you know what I mean? And these girls just exemplified that for me. And it made me see like, oh, middle school doesn't have to be fighting with your friends. It could be bonding with your friends. But life is still hard. And so I wanted to use that as a model of like, I'm celebrating this one group of girls that are so good to each other. But like, how do they deal when life gets hard or when they have a crush or when a parent is annoying or a teacher is rude or, you know what I mean? And they just inspired me. What are some of your favorite girl groups in TVs and movies? Girl groups, like girl friendships? Yes. Oh God. Have, have you seen the bold type? I haven't. Okay. That's a good one. The, it's kind of reminds me of girl stuff in the sense that first of all, I can't get enough of it because it reminds me of myself 20 years ago. So I'm reliving my like days in New York and being, you know, wearing clothes that aren't elastic waistband and like just living it up and working and career. And it's just these three girls that work for a magazine in New York and it's kind of this, they're really good friends and they really love each other. And you know, it's dealing with all the other stuff and they have each other to sort of go through life with. And again, they bump up against each other, but they still have each other in the end. And I'm, I think that's just the older version of this in a way. So I've been watching, I've been watching that. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that the characters, even the characters who are supposed to be kind of mean, aren't, they're not mean. Thank you for saying that. That I was very essential. They're the Avas, who are three girls named Ava that are fabulous. But that's another thing I just didn't, I'm tired of like popular girls being mean. I just don't think that's fair to popular girls. Like you can be popular because you're kind. You can be popular because you're smart or athletic or charitable or there's a million ways and somehow throughout the history of you know entertainment we've all made this silent agreement that popular equals mean and i i really want to change that because i just in the world i don't see that being true i actually think mean is coming from such intense insecurity and even then i have compassion at this point i've grown up a lot basically and now that i know what i know i want other people to know it too i love that I love, I've never I like had that experience of like the popular person being mean. It was always the loners that were mean in my experience. Yes. <laughs> Wait a minute. And I really tried to figure out what that could be, why. And then I realized, wait, it's the writer. Whoever wrote that, that's their point of view. So it's writers typically, I'm definitely stereotyping. We're typically introverts. We're typically observers. And a lot are not very outgoing by nature. 
you have to not be if you're choosing a job that's going to keep you in a room by yourself most of your life, right? So there's a certain personality type. And I think when you are that type, you tend to look at people that are more gregarious and living larger with a little bit of like that combination of, wow, I wish I could be them. Wow, I hate them. You know, like I want to be them so badly and I'm so not so I hate myself, but I don't really I'm not in touch with that level of like self-awareness. So I'm just going to hate them. And then that person goes and writes about, you know, a story that takes place like that. And they're suddenly painting these people one way. But how much interaction have they actually had with them? How, you know, I'm learning all this now. <laughs> I'm really paying attention to it. I love this next question. Will there be any kissing in the series? I hope so. Ooh, um, I don't want to say anything, but there's going to be a little bit. I mean, the next book is called Crush Stuff, my friends. Fantastic. And the book wow. after that is Awkward Stuff. So, <laughs> love that. that follows the most awkward part of your life. It gets better. Yes. <laughs> Shall we go ahead and do the quiz? Oh, yes. Okay, so this is a quiz I wrote. I assume the people watching have not read the book yet, which is good because a lot a lot of this, the questions come from the book. So this is character choices that are from the book that, so you'll find out which character you're most like, which girl stuff girl you're most like. Okay, ready? Yes, let me pull that up. Okay. Remember guys, all you have to do is comment and you're gonna be entered into a raffle and the winner is gonna get their name in the next book. That's great. Okay. Yes, and I comment, I want to know which character you are. So if you guys could please, after taking the quiz, just start posting what character you think you are, because there's been one that in doing this that has come that we've gotten most of, and I want to know if this is consistent with my findings. Okay. Are you okay? Can you see that? Yes. Okay. So which girl stuff girl are you? Are you a Fonda, a Drew, or a Ruthie? Find out which character is most likely by taking this quiz. All right. Computer's being oh. a little laggy, there you go. Okay, you're starting seventh grade and wanna make it the best year ever. Do you A, clarify your goals by making a vision board. If you can't see them, you can't manifest them. B, seventh grade will be the best year ever as soon as my crush starts paying attention to me. C, insist on total togetherness. When that bell rings, you and your besties will sit together, study together, and take pee, break, bleh, pee breaks together. Probably even take this quiz together. My back to school outfit must include the color of the day. The COD is a color we all agree on the night before. I want people to know we're a group, a group they want to be part of. Red is ideal for back to school because it symbolizes passion and fire. Red also stops traffic, literally. B, sweats, sweats, and sweats. If my pants are tight, I'm not all right. If my shirt has a collar, you're going to hear me holler. If my bra is lace, I'll make an ugly face. Fine, I don't need a bra yet, but when I do, it will be the sporty kind. C, a cute romper with an inviting cherry print. I want my outfit to say, it's a pleasure to meet you. I would say it myself, but I don't want to talk during class in case I miss something important. When you hear period purse, you think, A, every girl needs one so she can be prepared. It should contain sanitary napkins, a change of underwear, and essential oils to calm my cramps. Oh, and a bag of Reese's Pieces because they're the best and I deserve the best. B, my period needs a purse? How fancy. C, which period is the purse from? I hope it's the Elizabethan period. Everything was so ornate back then. When my best friends aren't around, I like to, um, is it me or are the next two answers incredibly depressing? B, surf, skate, oh my God, skateboard, surf, or snowboard. I've never been bored when I have a board. C, puzzle, read, watch foreign movies, and do nightly nude, news, nude broadcasts. <laughs> That'd be great. Do nightly news broadcasts for my stuffed animal. My stuffy loves current events. I'd rather get donkey kicked in the throat than A, not feel special, B, have my heart crushed by my crush, or C, get left behind. 
You might see me at a boy girl party wearing a, a silk kimono over shorts and wedge sandals. You might not remember me, but you'll remember my outfit. B, a helmet and skate pads. If you have a problem with protective outerwear, then I have a problem with you. C, eye clops, infrared stealth goggles, and a black unitard. I want a guy spy with my little eye. If I'm in a fight with my besties, I will A, do whatever I can to make things right. My apology will come with a gift bag and a new friendship bracelet. You know, to remind them how much we mean to each other and how irreplaceable, I mean sweet, I am. B, ignore them in, pro in public, mope in private. C, what besties? I've already moved on. Fine, I didn't. I can't, but I want to. Fine, I don't want to. I'm just going to make them think I do. Okay, are we ready for the results? Does everybody know what they want? I mean, what, can you tally it up? Have you tallied it up? Ready? 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 So I can see What's that. There we go. Okay, I can't see the thing. Sorry, one second. My computer's being okay. weird. It's okay. This gives everybody time to really check their answers. Check your answers. Check your answers. Okay, can you see it? Okay. That? All right. I'm getting close here. All right. The results. If you picked mostly A is you're a Fonda. You're creative, loyal, and determined. You must be taken seriously by the people you admire, and you will do whatever you can to make that happen. You also want to help your friends become their best selves, but your good intentions sometimes come off as bossy. Sigh, you're so misunderstood. A little advice for Fondas. It's okay to push yourself, but don't push your friends. Understand that your goals are, well, your own. Other people may not want the same things you do, and you have to accept that even when it messes up your brilliant plans, which it often does. Ugh, annoying. Okay, if you picked mostly bees, you're a Drew. You're athletic, adventurous, and a real what you see is what you get kind of girl. Typically, you're low maintenance and easygoing, but when you're testing positive for the crush virus, managing your mood swings can be a full-time job. Yes, infatuation is consuming. It fills bellies with butterflies and hijacks hormones, but keep your sneakers planted on the pavement or you'll lose yourself. A little advice for Drew. Try not to give the object of your desire too much power. Stay connected to the people who know how amazing you are and don't share your happiness password with anyone. You are the only one who gets to control that. Got it? Crushes come and go, but besties are forever. Be your own bestie. Okay, if you picked mostly C's, you're a Ruthie. You're curious, quirky, and in love with learning. Yes, you're afraid of the ocean and you'd wear a bodysuit made of bubble wrap before riding a skateboard, but you're big time brave. Don't, you don't follow trends or give in to peer pressure, which takes courage. A little advice for Ruthies. Keep your sneakers planted firmly on the ground. Stand, stand out girls don't always fit in and that can feel lonely and isolating. It's tempted to change who you are so those feelings go away. Don't. Do not lower your freak flag and never hide your individuality. Instead, choose friends, crushes, and stuffed animals who value your unique perspective and accept you for who you are. You're different for a reason. Find that reason and do great things. There we go. So what do we get? I'm seeing here, we got two Drews and a Fonda-ish. <laughs> Anyone else? A quiet audience. I think I'm a mix of a Fonda and Drew. You are? <laughs> yep, I almost, almost evenly. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a Fonda-Ruthie hybrid. I do love puzzles, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a hint of Ruthie from Jen Klonsky. All right. All right. I am entering your names into a generator. We're going to see who wins. All right. Three, two, one. Elizabeth, Ooh. you are the winner of the raffle. Elizabeth, thank God. I do not have an Elizabeth in the book yet. So <laughs> excellent. Congratulations, Elizabeth. You're going to have to make sure you're keeping tabs on when that next book is coming out. Yeah, it's going to be the third one. So, yeah, excellent. second one is done. 
That's a lock. But the third one, it's all Elizabeth. Might make you a heartbreaker. I don't know. <laughs> out what I'm going to do with you. Well, we can't wait to read it. It's going to be so fun. Thank you so much, Lissy, for doing this event with us. This is Thank absolutely fantastic. It's so much fun. So charming. So relatable. Pick it up um, for that middle grade girl in your life. Such a sweet book. Um, and when you order it from us, you're going to get an autographed book plate. Yay. For signing these. Boys Very cool. by the way. I don't mean to brag. Yeah, if you, if you're a boy that really wants a little insight into the ladies. I know a lot of boys that could dazzle him. Should. Yeah, exactly. Currently, adult men that should read this. Yeah. Thank you very <laughs> Thank much. Thank you so much. This is so great. Click that green button, pick up a copy from our independent bookstore, support the author, get a signed book plate. Thank you so much. This was so fun. Thank you. Bye. Have a great night, everyone.